In this video, we're going to take a look at 12 essential mods that you need to try in Cyberpunk 2077. These mods range from small gameplay tweaks to implementing new systems and even a few cosmetics for you Edge Runners fans out there. Every mod in this video can be downloaded via Nexus Mods. I'll put links in the description so you can check them out. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's take a look at the best mods for Cyberpunk 2077. What's up everyone, Big Dan here. I make videos about RPGs and gaming commentary. So if you enjoy this video, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to Big Dan Gaming. Without further ado, let's dive right in. Number one, Wannabe Edge Runner, a simple cyber psychosis mod. Cyber psychosis is a major theme in the cyberpunk universe, both in game and even more so in the Edge Runners anime. But there is no gameplay system in Cyberpunk 2077 to represent the effects of cyber psychosis. V is able to install all the cyberware in the world and have absolutely no negative repercussions or trade offs. Wannabe Edge Runner adds a new system to the gameplay called Humanity. Each cyberware implant that you install decreases your humanity permanently while installed. You also get temporary decreases in humanity when you activate your cyberware and kill enemies. These effects can be offset by going to sleep in V's apartment. You can track your current humanity value via the cyberware menu screen or with a new widget which will appear above the player's HP bar. If you want to prevent all negative effects and glitches from low humanity, you can take the Neuroblocker's consumable item like our homeboy David did. These can be purchased via a ripper dock or crafted yourself. There are three different levels of low humanity that affect V. The first stage is glitches, which creates light on-screen glitches and a critical damage debuff. This is a sign that V needs to sleep off their chrome usage. The next stage is pre-psychosis, which makes even more visual glitches, decreases your crit chance, and can even trigger cyberpsychosis. The final stage is the dreaded cyberpsychosis. This final form creates heavy visual glitches, but also buffs your movement speed, armor value, and health regeneration. If your character is outside or in a hostile zone, it will also trigger a police spawn. So Chrome Junkies beware, V might not be built different after all. Number 2, Chop Shops. This mod sets up a series of locations where V can sell stolen cars, kind of like Los Santos Customs in Grand Theft Auto V. There are five chop shop locations in total, in Watson, Yucatown, Haywood, Claire's Garage in Santa Domingo, and Dakota's in the Badlands. These will be marked on your map with a golden wrench icon. To sell a stolen car, simply drive it to one of the chop shops, which will trigger a dialogue menu where you can complete the transaction. Once you've sold the car in the menu, simply leave the vehicle to complete the sale. The car will despawn once you're sufficiently far enough away from the chop shop. I really enjoy hijacking cars in Cyberpunk 2077, but it was always a little disappointing that you couldn't do anything with them afterwards. I hope there will be an update in the future that lets you keep stolen cars as well someday. Number 3. Netrunner eShop Virtual Atelier This adds a shop accessible via computer terminals on the net. It allows you to purchase all available quick hacks and crafting materials available in the game, so you don't have to run all over the map to different Netrunner merchants. This mod requires the Virtual Atelier mod to function, so be sure to check out the mod requirements to make sure you have everything you need before installing. Number 4. Edge Runners v Lucy Cosplay Want to make your character look like Lucy from Edge Runners? Well now you can with the simple mod installation. Lucy was easily my favorite character from the Edge Runners anime, so I'm looking forward to building a mono wire wielding Netrunner in my next playthrough. Number 5. Lizzie's Bar Enhanced Lizzie's Bar holds a significant place in the lore of Cyberpunk, not only in the tabletop game, but in 2077 as well. This mod allows you to more fully explore Lizzie's Bar and even purchase a room to stay in yourself. It unlocks all previously blocked doors so you can poke around and make yourself at home. Number 6. Respec Attributes as someone who likes to experiment with different builds in Cyberpunk, this mod is a game changer. 
Cyberpunk 2077 allows you to reset perk points at any time for a modest fee, but overarching attributes have always been permanently locked for each playthrough. So if you wanted to completely switch from a net running hacker to a bodybuilding katana wielding giga chad, you'd have to start a fresh playthrough if you wanted to feel the full potential of a new build. This mod allows you to refund your attribute points so you can reinvest and completely transform your build without spending countless hours rolling a new character, playing through Act 1 again, and grinding to level up. This is great for people who don't have a lot of time to sink into video games, but want to experiment with vastly different playstyles. I plan to use this mod to help me create some different build guides and experiment further with all Cyberpunk's combat has to offer. Number 7. Phone Messages Overhaul or PMO this mod adds hundreds of new text messages to Cyberpunk 2077 to expand your relationship with a few select NPCs. The characters you'll receive additional texts from are Judy, Jackie, Pan Am, the Aldecaldos, Carrie, and the Netrunner Bugbear. Hilariously, River Ward is omitted from the mod. I guess no one likes him that much. <laughs> But they did add a romance option for Bugbear as well, which is pretty cool. In order to properly experience the phone messages overhaul mod, it's best to install it for a fresh playthrough. If you use it on an existing save file, some of the messages may not trigger or break. There are also translations for over 10 languages, so many non-English speakers can enjoy this mod as well. They are continuing to expand and update this mod over time, so it's possible more characters and conversations will be added in the future. Number 8. Better Consumables Most of the consumables in vanilla Cyberpunk 2077 were pretty much useless. There are a few exceptions like the healing inhaler, but for the most part, consumable buffs were so small that most players never use them. This mod significantly buffs a handful of the most important consumables to make them more useful for combat scenarios. For instance, Ram Jolt now provides 3 extra ram, which is great for netrunner builds. Food and drink buffs have been extended to last 20 minutes, and many more items have been adjusted as well. Some of the item descriptions in-game could not be updated to show the new buff effects, so be aware of that when installing. Number 9. Better Fast Travel Map One of the most annoying things about Cyberpunk's fast travel system is how minimalistic the map is at the fast travel terminals. If you forget to toggle a waypoint marker for an optional objective like a ripper dock or merchant, then you won't be able to see that on the fast travel map. This mod updates the game's fast travel map, to enable the same filtering and waypoint systems from the regular map. This makes it much easier to plot your route and select the correct fast travel location when using this system. Big ups to the mod authors of this one. Number 10, Roach Race Difficulty Tweaks. As the name suggests, this mod adds adjustable difficulty modes to the new Roach Race arcade game. There are two new modes, Easier and Harder. Easier reduces high scores by 30%, increases the bonus from carrots and apples, and makes them appear more frequently. Harder mode increases every high score by 15%, as well as modifying enemy AI and creating more obstacles. I haven't played much Roach Race myself, but it's always nice to have some more variation in these types of games to provide new challenges. Number 11. V's Edgerunner Mansion This mod allows you to purchase and access V's Mansion from the Sun ending. You know, the one where V meets Mr. Blue Eyes? With this mod, you can easily access the mansion without any loading screens by using an elevator. It also adds new animations for sitting, sleeping, showering, and wardrobe to make it fully functional like V's apartment. It also incorporates the new animations for drinking coffee, etc. To purchase it, simply approach the elevator in front of V's mega building. If you have less than 30 street cred, it will cost you 150,000 eddies. But if you have more than 30 street cred, the prices have to 75,000 eddies. I love the design of this mansion and was always bummed that you could only explore it for a few minutes at the very end of the game in a very specific ending. So I'm glad this mod gives the mansion a new life. Number 12. Kuroshi Optics Expanded Getting your Kuroshi Optics from Victor at the beginning of the game is a really big moment for V. 
But then for the rest of the playthrough, you're locked into this one specific version of Kuroshi Optics, which is weird because you'd expect there'd be more available versions of this hardware on the market. This mod adds additional variants of the Kuroshi Optics cyberware, featuring additional mod slots based on rarity. There are now versions ranging from common to legendary, featuring 1 to 5 mod slots in that respective order. Additionally, there's a legendary slash iconic version with 6 mod slots. All mods are available for purchase at Victor's Clinic, so you better pay him back for that first one he gave you on credit. Like other cyberware in the game, you'll need to boost your street cred to unlock the ability to purchase higher tier versions of the Kuroshi. So there you have it. 12 essential mods to take your Cyberpunk 2077 experience to the next level. I would love to hear about any interesting mods you've heard about or have played yourself. Let me know about your favorite Cyberpunk mods in the comment section below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Cyberpunk and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.